Today we're going to talk about the authority of the Word of God and in particular the authority of the scriptures, the Bible that we have. And we're going to show and talk about how because God has the ultimate authority and he has invested that same authority in his word that the Bible and the scriptures that we have come to us with the same authority as God himself and therefore have the authority to establish every teaching and every practice in his church. So let's first talk about the authority of God himself. Obviously God himself has the highest authority, the ultimate authority. There is no authority higher than God. He is the King of Kings. He is the Lord of Lords. So for every authority, every king, every lord that there is on earth, there is a higher authority, the authority of God. But when we reach the authority of God, we've reached the top of the ladder. There's no one higher than him. He has the ultimate authority. The next point we have to make is that there is no disconnect between the authority of God and the authority of his word. When he speaks, it comes with the same authority as God himself. When God speaks, it's as good as done. We see this in the very act of creation. God said, light be, and light was. He spoke and it came to pass. His word came with his authority. We see this in what the prophet Isaiah said. He said that no word of God returns to him empty or void, but it always accomplishes that for which it was purposed. And we're told that God is not a man or a son of man that he should lie or change his mind. So whenever God speaks, his word comes with the same authority as God himself. This, of course, we know is the, uh, the faith and the understanding that the centurion had, the centurion whose faith Jesus marveled at, because he understood that Jesus didn't need to come under the same roof to heal his servant. He only needed to speak the word and the word itself would have the same authority as Jesus himself to accomplish the healing that he was looking for. So if we believe that the Bible is the word of God, then we have to accept it as the ultimate authority in our lives. So therefore it's important that we know and understand why we believe that the Bible is the word of God and also understand the processes by which the Bible came to us from God. The processes that, through which we have the Bible from God are the processes of revelation, inspiration, replication and translation. And we'll talk about each one of those a little bit. Firstly, revelation. Revelation is the only way we can know anything about God. You know, God is the creator, but he is not part of his creation. We can't see God by looking through a telescope. We can't examine God by uh, peering through a microscope. We can't look him up on Facebook. The only way we can know anything about God is because God as the creator has chosen to reveal himself to us. The writer to the Hebrews said that God has revealed himself to us in many different ways at many different times. He revealed himself to Moses uh, through which we have the books of the law in the Old Testament. He revealed himself to the prophets through which we have the prophetic writings and the Old Testament books of history. And ultimately, he says, he's revealed himself through his son, Jesus Christ. And it was the people who Jesus had an encounter with who have written all the books that we have in the New Testament. Of course, we know that the process of revelation hasn't stopped, that God continues to speak. He is a speaking God and he is always talking and revealing himself. But the way that he revealed himself in scripture is different. And that difference is the process of inspiration. You see, when we prophesy, the Bible says we prophesy in part. We see, but we see as if in a mirror dimly. 
when we hear what God has said and then we communicate it, it's inevitable that part of God's spirit and part of our own spirit um, are come together in the mix. We're communicating what we've heard as genuinely as we can, but we do so through the medium of our own imperfect understanding. Now, there are those who will say, well, how do we know that the same process didn't happen with the original authors? They heard something from God, but how do we know that what was written wasn't just their own limited understanding? Well, the scriptures are clear that that is not the case. In fact, there are two scriptures in particular. The first is 2 Timothy 3 verse 16, which says, All scripture is God-breathed. The second is 2 Peter 1, 20 to 22, which says, Above all, it's important to understand that no prophecy of scripture came about by the prophet's own interpretation, but men wrote as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. Now, this is the process of inspiration, that it wasn't just that the original authors received revelation from God, but they wrote down that revelation under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. They were carried along by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit oversaw the entire process to make sure every word that he wished to communicate was written down in the pages of the scriptures. Now, this doesn't mean that, that the author's personalities and their culture and their history didn't come through. It just means that the Holy Spirit chose exactly the right people to use so that when it came together, it was exactly the message he wanted. Like an artist who chooses his palette so that when they're put together, the masterpiece that he had in his heart is expressed exactly as he intended. As a result of the inspiration of the scriptures, we believe that the Bible is inerrant, sufficient and eternal. Inerrant means it has nothing which is untrue. Sufficient means it has nothing that has been left out. And eternal means it has nothing that is out of date. That is what God said is everything he needs to say, not just to the original authors in their original culture, in their original um, geographic location, but it speaks to every person of every generation with the authority of God himself. Next, we come to the process of replication. Some may say, well, that's great. The original manuscripts were written under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, but we don't have those original manuscripts anymore. That would be true. Some might also say that it's possible that when people were making copies of those manuscripts that they could make mistakes. That is also true. But some go on to say that that means that what we have today is somehow corrupt or unreliable and cannot be trusted. And that is absolutely not true. And the reason for that is it wasn't a process of Chinese whispers where one person passed it on to one other person and down the chain you have no way of telling what came from the original and what was introduced. But when the Bible was copied, it was copied hundreds of times. And each time that it was made, yes, little mistakes were made, but the chances of two scribes making exactly the same mistake in exactly the same portion of the scriptures is minuscule. And so by comparing the thousands of ancient documents that we have, it's very easy to tell where those small changes were introduced. It's also important to note that the majority of those changes are trivial and don't change the meaning of the text in any significant way. Certainly no doctrine of Christianity base, is based on any disputed text. And the other thing is they're not secret. Most good Bibles will tell you in the footnote if a, if a variation of the text was available. Finally, we come to translation. Unfortunately, the original authors of the Bible didn't write for us in English. They wrote in Hebrew, in Aramaic and Greek. And so the final process of the Bible coming to us is that someone needs to translate it. And of course, in any translation, not just the translation of the scriptures, but any translation from a foreign text, there needs to be a balance between the word for word accuracy of the original document and the natural flow 
and um, understandableness of the language that is used. You know, the, the, the Bible authors were not uh, stuffy religious people. They were ordinary, everyday people. They were fishermen. And so it's important that uh, the translation we use captures the dynamic uh, living nature of the language that was used and is not something that seemed to be detached or religious or, or out of touch. And so you, that's why we have many different translations. It's not that they're saying many different things. They're saying the same thing, but with a different emphasis on the translation. Some will carry a greater emphasis on conveying the accuracy of the words used so we don't miss any subtle nuance or, or meaning in the text, while others will try to convey the everyday language and impact that the original authors would have had and the original hearers would have heard when they heard uh, the words spoken for the first time in their own language. So in conclusion, we can be confident that the Bible is the word of God and as such, it carries the ultimate authority to our lives. It is the one and only benchmark and plumb line to establish every teaching and doctrine and practice in the church. It's not for us to examine the scriptures and decide which bits we like or which bits we don't. That would be to raise ourselves as a higher authority than the word. But we are to accept this word as a living and active word, to judge the thoughts and attitudes of our own heart and to submit to its authority. Oh,